Hello dear friends, this was already see coming with the defeat of some regressive Pleiadians. Opinion piece, cosmic rectification, huge universal change, Aldebaran replaces Pleiades, they will start in first contact. The Aldebarans are the ambassadors, they are a sister race to Pleiadians, they helped Maria Orsic in her research. They collaborated in a secret space program. 80% of the races left the solar system. This is part of a massive cosmic rectification. New technology to protect missionaries of light. Let's start. The Aldebarans have decided to be the main race that will appear in the first official contact with being from other worlds, thus replacing the role that the Pleiadians had before, according to the latest Cobra report. The Pleiadians have decided that they will no longer be the main race that will create the first contact with humankind, but they will not accept the revenge of some warriors of light after the event aware of the evil that some regressive Pleiadians have done. Although, historically speaking, the Aldebarans were not always completely dedicated to the light, the Great Archon Invasion of 1996 has turned them completely serious and they are now dedicated members of the Galactic Confederation that stands above the Federation. This surprising news is totally consistent with other news from other channels that revealed that the majority of the Pleiadians had regressive intentions to conquer the Earth in a very ungentle way, but were recently defeated by a superior force and have now changed their policy under the guidance of benevolent wise elders and intend to rectify the wrong they have done, but they will not accept earthly revenge. It is anticipated that the forces of light will safely eliminate all weapons of the dark forces. First contact will take place peacefully, humanity will accept the existence of a galactic civilization, and the earth will finally be liberated. Definition Aldebaran is the bright star in the Taurus constellation and the 13th brightest in the night sky. As one of the brightest, Aldebaran is also one of the most mythologized stars. Aldebaran is a red giant, which means it is colder than the sun, with a surface temperature of 3,900 degrees Celsius, but its radius is about 44 times that of the Sun, making it 400 times more luminous. The star rotates slowly and takes 520 days to complete one rotation. Aldebaran is believed to host the planet several times the mass of Jupiter, called Aldebaran B. Aldebaran is and its home constellation are best in from the northern hemisphere during the winter months, particularly in December. It is also a spring star and is therefore visible again in early spring for a few hours after sunset. Ancient astronomers from the Middle East, India, Greece, Mexico and Australia had stories to explain Aldebaran's reddish glow which is actually a product of its large size and relatively cool surface temperature. The name Aldebaran comes from the Arabic Aldabaran, whose meaning is the one that follows, in reference to the fact that this star follows the Pleiades cluster on its nightly journey across the sky. Many popular fables use it to designate the persevering man and woman who do not accept defeat. Ptolemy called it the torch bearer, and in Greek it was also called the eye of the bull.
massive change. According to COBRA, 80% of all representatives of various galactic races left the solar system to receive a necessary healing, and only the strongest the most efficient beings remain to help in the liberation of this planet. As part of this rectification, the Pleiadians as a collective have decided that have decided that they will no longer be the primary race that will create first contact with humankind. They will focus more on very specific help for those light workers and warriors who are open to their presence and can work with them effectively. The Pleiadians as a collective have also now accepted exact protocols for interaction with surface light workers to avoid cultural misunderstandings that can occur between the loving and sensual Pleiadian race and the often distrustful and traumatized surface population. The Pleiadians have also decided to set some boundaries and will not accept abusive behavior from vengeful warriors of light after the event. The light forces are doing their best to help the surface population although they are not obligated to do so, and the following approach would be much more effective. Much of the 1221 Pleiadian Command Equipment, the Pleiadian Tachyon Chamber Equipment, the Pleiadian Planetary Network of Light Equipment and Contact Equipment will remain active and become more efficient. New Technology Pleiadian scientific teams have developed a new advanced technology based on entangled quantum light tunnels. They hope that this new technology can provide more protection to light wakers against the constant attack of darkness that I can attest and testify to. This new technology will also begin to revive the planetary light belt that largely collapsed in August 2019 with the collapse of the Beta timeline. At that time, many portals to the planet's surface have become inoperable, and now those portals will be reactivated again. After the event, the Pleiadians will primarily focus on assisting more advanced light workers, who will focus on building sound family mandalas within islands of light. Billions of human beings who have been evacuated from the etheric and astral planes of the Earth and who now live on a planet in the Pleiadian cluster will undergo the selection process. Those humans who feel an alignment with the angelic presence and are open to spiritual growth will remain on that planet. The rest of humanity will be transported to a planet in the Aldebaran star system that is now being prepared for them. Aldebaran. The Aldebarans are also a star race that has chosen to be the primary race that will appear on the surface of, hum of humanity to first contact, replacing the role previously held by the Pleiadians. The Aldebarans are a sister race to the Pleiadians and are quite similar to them, with a little more focus on technology and a little more masculine energy. After the fall of Atlantis, the Aldebarans have helped surface humanity many times throughout human history by bringing them technology and improving their genetic code. They have maintained their vibrational frequency in the hostile environment of the Earth's surface through the institution of the harem, meaning sacred, closed, and protected space. The Aldebarans also helped the Pleiadians build the pyramid complex of Xi'an in China and were also very active in pre-dynastic Egypt. They founded Vedic civilization in Tamil Nadu and another in Rajasthan and Gujarat. They also formed the Rama Empire in ancient India and the city of Dwarka. And the Sumerian Empire with the city of Uruk now known as Warka. And they fought the Draconians in a nuclear war and lost it. But 
its influence on the planet's surface diminished considerably after the war and the subsequent flood in 2140 before BC. Most of them were then ordered by the quarantine master to leave the solar system and some were able to go underground to join, strengthen and expand the Agartha network. They were active from there from then until 1996, when all underground Aldebarans were taken prisoner by dark forces and forced to leave the, the solar system. In later history, its influence was limited on the Earth's surface. They contacted Emperor Wu, who marked the height of the Han Dynasty in ancient China. During the Han Dynasty, TLV mirrors were introduced as miniature portals through which people could connect to higher dimensions. They also contacted Li Yuan, the founder of the Tang Dynasty. During the Tang Dynasty, they were instrumental in the growth and development of Chang'an, which was the capital of the Tang Dynasty in China, and is not far from the famous pyramids of, of Xi'an. Since then, they occasionally came into contact with the Li family, one of the most important white Chinese noble families. They also occasionally infiltrated and incarnated into the Aldo Brandini Black noble family, where they secretly preserved the mysterious of goddess. In the 20th century, they began the secret space program through Maria Orsic, who later was kidnapped by the Nazis to put her at the service of the Third Reich, Tibet. Around, around the time that the Aldebaran were forced to retreat from the surface over 5,000 years ago, which was also the time when the rise of Aldebaran marked the spring equinox, they sent a body that impacted the area of the Tibet. This meteorite brought back many beautiful brownish golden green tectites, tectic tectites originating from Aldebaran and very rarely found by man monks and herb collectors in the triangle between Salinquo, Namuku and Kuona in Tibet. And those Tibetan tectites are now being activated with advanced technology, helping the Aldebarans to anchor their energies in the surface light grid. They are also other types of Tibetan tectites found elsewhere in Tibet that originate from other star systems, and Cobra will talk more about them in one of the future updates. The Cobra meeting in Chiang Mai, Thailand, was a great success and was accompanied by a lot of underground and extraterrestrial activity. The second day of the meeting brought a very important breakthrough regarding the anchoring of the goddess energy on the surface of the planet with far-reaching consequences. Victory of the light. Thanks a lot, dear friends.